always wonderful and special and new. Sure, other folks think they know what it's all about. Millions of other folks. But when do two people ever really love each other as we do? When were two people ever so sure they were just born to live with each other? We can't fail to find happiness together in this wonderful world of today and tomorrow, in a whole lifetime of wonderful tomorrows. Imagine a home of our own, a home made of smiles and love, of hope and cheer, a home safe against trouble and loneliness, a sunny, cozy place, all of our own. And you'll do this, and I'll do that. And we'll never want it to be any other way again, ever, for the rest of our lives. An extremely attractive idea that young men have proposed since time immemorial. But how valid is it in our time, in America today, the dream of a home of your own, when you go looking for it, can turn into a nightmare, a social blight called slums, a health problem called overcrowding, an economic deadlock called housing. These can be love nests in a real world. This is what often shelters young family life in our time. It's not surprising if young people are given pause by the fears of our age, by the threat of war. War that twice in their parents' lifetime called young husbands away from their family life. It's an age of unrest and change, both individual and social. An age of confused personal values, of widespread domestic difficulties, culminating in a fabulous number of broken homes. Permanent relationship amid such impermanence. The young men and women ready for marriage today were born in a depression. Where can they find the courage and hope to take the responsibility of making what should be the most secure of all worlds a home in the atmosphere of competition and chaos that seems to be the world around us. It's not cowardice that makes them think twice about the problems of raising children in a world where the tight reins of dollars and cents must ever govern the individual's creative instincts, where ambition is confined to the chasm between inflation and deflation, where rising living costs seem always to outdistance lagging earning power. It's a tough world, this world the young people are supposed to inherit. But they are young people. And the inner drive to grow up and have children, to make a life that is richer, more satisfying, more pleasurable than any other, is strong within them. In spite of the conditions around them, they are determined to find a way to raise a family, and a way to give strength and permanence to that family. They are like the thousands of other young couples, hopeful and resolute, who every day in America go through the most serious, solemn ceremony that man can voluntarily enter into. A ceremony that is a sacrament in every religion. It is a binding contract under every law that is celebrated with joy in every culture. Moderns enter the most traditional of all human relationships with the knowledge that nothing can make a marriage work except the people who are living it, now or at any other time in man's history. On the other hand, marriage in most of America today is a little different from what it was yesterday because the people are a little different. For instance, Phyllis Burns, housewife by choice. A year ago, she was Phyllis Hagen. She was staining slides in the pathology lab down at the hospital. At 23, she was earning her own living and living her own life. Her work was useful and interesting. And in her time, being a bachelor girl isn't the social disgrace it was when our parents called them spinsters. Phyllis didn't marry because she had to, or because it was a duty. She could take it, leave it. But it was the idea of children, mostly, that made Phyllis say yes. The idea of a life with no one of her own to love and care for seemed to her like only half a life, or less. She wanted a family, wanted marriage. Moderns like Phyllis think of marriage as a voluntary state for both men and women, a reasonable goal for adults, not an end in itself. She met Chad at the university in a math course. She got the better grades. Now he's an engineer and she's a housewife. He's helping to build a hospital in her town. 
a town he'd never heard of before they got to know each other. People aren't stopped by geography or class distinctions in selecting a marriage partner nowadays. Chad didn't choose Phil for money or connections or even because she seemed the most wonderful girl on earth. He'd known other girls that he liked, both socially and in his work. Sure, he was in love with Phyllis, but he wasn't looking for a miracle. He was looking for a wife. And he chose carefully, without help, as he does most things. He did it with a sense of being responsible for it, trying to know as many facts as possible and then acting with faith in himself and in her. Freedom of choice, it's a modern privilege and a modern responsibility. Just as she believes that a child is a person and entitled to respect and consideration, Catherine Hartford, another wife in our town, believes a married woman is a person too. Catherine is modern with modern ideas about education and marriage as well. To her, the husband is not the master, the wife a slave. She doesn't think of the children in her classes as inferior to her. And she doesn't think of herself as inferior in any way to Frank, who she married four years ago. Different, yes, as every man is from every woman, as every individual is from any other individual. But one isn't better than the other for those differences. As a teacher and a mother, Kathy is a free, fulfilled human being. She's able to pull her weight in the partnership that is marriage. In a modern partnership, the rights and privileges, like the duties and responsibilities, are better balanced when they're equal. Frank is a businessman, practical, responsible, sensible. He thinks of things in terms of cause and effect. As a modern, he even thinks about marriage that way. Years ago, the marriage deal worked if the husband was sober and brought home the paycheck every week. If the wife was faithful and produced a house full of children. Frank knows it doesn't quite work that way anymore. He's shrewd about people, meets a lot of them in the course of his business day. He knows a lot of happily married couples, but he also knows the divorce rate in America. Marriage is like a car, Frank says. To keep running smoothly, it's got to keep getting the fuel that makes it start and go in the first place. People have to go on liking each other in order to live together. A man has to be able to ask, is this a good thing for me, for her, for the child? And the answer has to be yes, at least pretty good, for all of us. If young people could look into the minds of modern couples, how would they find that question answered? What are the positive values that go with the jokes about the ball and chain? What does marriage mean to the people who live it day after day? Companionship, belonging. It's hard to hit on the right word, but that's most important in marriage. For me, anyhow. Yes, companionship. But not just being with another person. Phil is very much a gal. And these cars are like going on a date, with the companionship angle added. It's mornings like this, getting up when it's still cool. Feeling alone, and yet not quite alone. Not lonely. This has always been my way of combing out the tangles I get myself into. And she used to go into these woods with her dad when she was a kid. So you couldn't get a better team for the chores and for the fun. When I first met her, we found we kind of liked the same things, as well as liking each other. Sure, we'll argue about where the fish are biting today, but we can settle it without anger or a feeling we're each giving in to the other. It's fun just being with her. She can take tough breaks without getting fussed. If the sun isn't shining, we can usually fix our troubles with a laugh. Often, Phil and I don't have to say anything, and we know what we mean. That comes from being together so much and liking it. 
that's probably the most wonderful thing of all, that bond of relaxed silence. I can know she's with me without having to touch her or talk to her. We're together, really together. Maybe I do take a little more responsibility than I would if I'd gone out with Jack or Willie. So what? To tell the truth, I get a kick out of it. The old business of being the man of the house, making believe we're tougher or something. But it makes you feel good anyhow. There's a lot of things like that I've started to do since we decided to go it together. Trying to understand her crazy notions, having patience and encouraging her when she's low, really respecting her for the terrific gal she is. It's not always easy. I've got my own problems, but it sure pays off. And not only with her, by wanting to give her those things, I've learned how to give them to other people. The better I am with her, the better I am with the gang in the office. Gets to be a habit, I suppose, this husband business. I like Frank. I like liking him. I feel good way down inside when he's buzzing around nearby. Whether he's gay or tired or just busy old Frank like now, I feel warm and cozy. When I like someone completely, without reserve, I find I like myself. I'm happy. We're all a little like that, I guess. I can see it in Frank, the way he fusses over the house, or the tone of his voice when he talks to Buddy. It's fun to like. Frank isn't the handsomest man in the world, or the cleverest, but he won't ever make me ashamed of liking him. Life isn't perfect. Sometimes when I want to stew quietly, Frank's need for action is a nuisance. But it doesn't last long. On the other hand, there are lots of things that interest me that he won't talk about because he finds them highbrow. We're different, but in the things that count, we never really get far from each other. I sometimes think I can see our love in Buddy, in his eyes, in his smile. It's in the air that eats. Love can be a good, healthy diet, in spite of what they say about not living on it. For growing kids, I think it's more important than vitamins. It's not bad for young women approaching middle age, either. She's always talking about getting old. Every new wrinkle, every gray hair. To tell the truth, she looks better to me every day. Kathy was always good looking. But since Buddy was born, something has happened to her looks. More peaceful, sweeter, realer. Sure, I've thought about it. Every married man does. I've tried to figure out why we don't get bored with each other, the way people in novels seem to do. Naturally, we're getting older, but I don't notice it. Not in her, not in me as far as she's concerned. As long as things stay the way they are, I'm a happily married man. Yes, it may be different from the movie version, but the gal at home is the gal I go for, and not just as wife or companion or mother of my kid. I mean gal, and after five years, I want to touch her and kiss her and hold her in my arms. And maybe that's funny, but it's also wonderful. Maybe it's just because we've played it straight. I'm not kidding her, and she's not holding anything back. The more we're together, the more we like each other. When the first romantic fever was over, we didn't give up and try finding it somewhere else. We looked at each other instead, clearly, as we really were, and we liked what we saw. Kathy doesn't need pink ribbons or a phony halo to make her look good, nor do brains and strength make a pretty girl any less feminine. that prefers a pretty gal to a beautiful woman has got an awful lot to learn. Chad is solid. He's there. Now and whenever I need him. You mightn't think so to see us operate. I always seem to be doing things for him. 
and he seems to depend on my doing them. A stranger might wonder how he got along before I met him. But that's not really how I feel about it. Take his work, for instance. There's a lot of math to be done in connection with this building competition he's entered. He could do it alone, of course. But it happens that I'm pretty good at math. And so we agreed that I would do part of it. It's work, sure, but it's fun, too. And the fact that he trusts me to do it well is what I call respect. And respect is something very important to me. How did it ever get to be so late? I'll have to fly to get to that clinic on time. And I'm not finished with the ironing. Looks like I'll have to start changing a lot of habits. Even though the baby isn't due for another six months. I wonder what he's going to do to our routine. We've only just settled down into this way of life. And now, that must be Chad already. I am late. The old goof. I think he's beginning to behave like a proud papa. I like to get lunch for him, but on days like this, I simply can't. Everything is ready. I'm sure he doesn't mind coping for himself. Funny, I always thought I'd be scared, but I'm not. Not of this, nor what's coming. Chad told me I wouldn't be. When the time comes, he said, your whole body gets ready for it. And so does your mind. And he's right. He's always doing that, encouraging me, making me feel that I can stand on my own feet. He's a real person, and he expects me to be a real person, too. Funny thing is that it works. Of course I don't mind waiting. It's what I gave up pathology for. It's to be a woman like all these other women. It's really being a person in the most complete sense. It's part of the big thing behind Chad and me. Neither one of us needs the other to live or breathe for him. On the other hand, we're not ashamed to depend on each other once in a while. As a team, we're going to be hard to beat. These marriages are not perfect. But all in all, they seem to work. And they work in proportion to the emotional maturity of the partners. Marriage is an institution for grown-ups. Kathy has grown up to the point of accepting herself. A simple, good-natured soul who likes to love and be loved. To be sure, Frank might read more than the sports page if he wanted to be a better companion for his wife and family. But Kathy knows what she's looking for. And there's a good chance she'll do what it takes to get it. Big things and little things. No one expects anyone. The Hartfords were going to spend a quiet evening at home. Oh, of course, Jim Kieran. He did promise to drop the list of new Kiwanis members. Come on in for a few minutes, Jim. But sure, we're not doing a thing this evening. Kathy could easily do without the Kierans tonight. But Frank knows he may need Jim's vote when the council meets next week on that zoning proposition. So in they come. Well, that's the end of Mozart for tonight. It's tough, but Frank usually knows what he's doing. And so the Hartfords entertain the Kierans. It isn't exactly what either family planned or exactly what the ladies wanted, but it won't be such a bad evening. Across town at the Burns, it's the old team at work. Stresses, safety factors, underpinnings. The competition only has a month to go and the second floor drawings haven't even been started. Who can that be at this hour? Not Molly nor Jack Hazlitt? Bill Martin. Be nice to see him and Eve soon. What's that? They want us to go to the movies tonight? Of course we can't, darling. We agreed we were going to finish these plans. Sure, but I just told him we were spending the evening at home. But Phyllis is a big girl, too. If she's going to spend her time helping Chad, she's going to see that something comes of it. She's given up her career for the marriage, but that doesn't mean she's turned into a playgirl. And Chad has grown up enough to adjust. 
to decide between two things that he wants by picking the one he wants most and letting the other go. He'd like to spend the evening with the Martins. And he'd like to finish the job. He knows he's lucky to have a wife who knows what he wants most. Things are merrier if less productive over at the... There are no buzz in a modern marriage. No one who is right all the time, or even most of the time. And no slaves. There are people who feel pushed around even part of the time. Moderns are rather proud of being free. But freedom in marriage is mostly freedom to give. A wonderful freedom for those who have used it and enjoy it. It's not something new, this pleasuring. It's the stuff that fans are made of. It's what marriage is all about. It's the real difference between an adult and a child. A child must get in order to live and enjoy life. An adult has enough for himself, and so he can afford to give. The child is weak and helpless, and has to receive love and food and shelter in order to feel strong and secure. A grown-up's strength and security is increased by the knowledge that he can give these things to someone else without a sense of sacrifice or loss. A husband and wife who have learned to give freely to each other and to their family have learned the secret of a happy marriage. That kind of love is not new. But not every man and woman knows where to look for it. And the only place it exists in themselves. Young people grow stronger and more adult not by looking for their happiness in the bewildering world around them, or by running away from their problems to a dream world of romance. If they are old enough to marry, they should be adult enough to face the responsibility of making that marriage work, each one equally. That's what Chad and Phyllis, Frank and Kathy, and so many young couples all over the world are doing, and what they'll be doing tomorrow. How else can grown-ups find the sense of satisfaction, the dignity, the grace, the inner happiness of a full life? Marriage is still a goal for moderns.